planet. He challenges for the WBC Flyweight Championship against Pong Sak Lek. And here we go for round number one. And it's going to be interesting, I guess, early on for Hussey, how he deals with the nerves, the mental strength that he's shown throughout his career so far, whether he can maintain that in the biggest moment here of his life. I'm joined by Adrian Warren from AAP, their boxing writer. And Adrian, what do you know about the champion? Matthew, we know that he's a very skillful southpaw, uh, likes to jab, also a very strong counter puncher, and uh, Hussein Hussein is very wary of that. Apparently, he's got a, a good left or good right jab and a very good left hook. Hussein, they're immediately digging to the body, trying to establish the jab, throwing that jab out with authority. And it is a trademark left rip to the to the body that uh, Hussein is renowned for. He just swallows there a straight left from the champion. Back he comes though with his own right hand. Both fighters opening up here early in the fight. No feeling out period. And that's what we come to expect from these Thai champions. As the Thai comes in, Hussein, they're trying to establish the left hand, comes over the top with the right. Hussein, they're just walking into a left hand. Of course, the crowd will be well and truly behind the local champion. Hussein with a height and reach advantage, and he will want to use that early in the contest. And Adrian Hussey looking fairly composed here in the first round. Yeah, composed is the word, is the word Matthew. He wore a couple of punches early on, but he seems to be settling down. I'd just like to see him jab a little bit more and then, uh, as you say, rip in a couple of those body punches. Good work there from Hussein, beating the champion to the punch. making the eighth defense of his world championship. He's seven and zero in world title fights, three KOs. And the four fights that have gone the distance have been uh, easy points of victory for him. There's that right hook there of the champion, catching Hussein just above the ear. Both fighters varying their attack nicely here in the first round, both going to the head and down to the body. looking very composed, very focused. Good work there from Hussein, digging to the body. And there's the bell ending round number one, a very tightly contested round, Adrian. Not much in it at all, Matthew. A nice little flurry there from uh, Hussein Hussein at the end. And uh, I'd like to see him do a little bit more work in the second round there. I thought Pong Saklet might just have shaded that round, but uh, no great alarms for Hussey, who feels that he has to knock this guy out to be absolutely sure of getting a win. Must be an incredible feeling to know that uh, basically for his entire life, Hussey Hussein has been training towards this one moment and uh, it's make or break really because if he loses, it's back to square one. Well, those are exactly the words he used to me last week. He's waited a long time for this. He's been made to wait for the best part of two years by the World Boxing Organisation and now the World Boxing Council. Jeff Phoenix says he believes this guy has the want and the hunger to win the title and uh, let's hope he's right. Good round, huh? Well, the corner there of Hussey Hussein, pretty calm. Jeff Fennick just urging him to do much of the same, perhaps lift his work rate a little bit. They'd be keen for him to get that jab working well. And here, here we see some of the action from the first round. There's this beautiful straight right hand, but back comes the champion. But as you can see there, Hussey Hussein having the best of that exchange. As we set ourselves for the second round of this WBC flyweight championship fight. It's Hussein Hussein of Australia versus Hong Sak Lek, the defending champion from Thailand. Straight left there once again from the Thai fighter, and every time he lands you can hear the crowd roaring, which has got to have some effect, I would imagine, Adrian, on the judges. You might think so subconsciously, but uh, Hussey knew coming into the fight that uh, there would be quite an intimidating atmosphere, but he, he actually hoped to intimidate the Thai fighter with his size and height. He was quite convinced that he'd be able to do that. Good work there from Hussein. 
the Thai champion is able to counter. We've seen that on a couple of occasions there as he rips up the middle with the uppercut. He's saying they're once again going to the body. The fight's being fought at a frenetic pace. And that's the great thing about these lighter divisions. You see these champions and challengers throwing punches in bunches. Good work there from the champion. Straight left hand. fighter continuing to come forward saying they're just poking out the left using it as a range finder coming over the top with his left hook from Hussein. He does need to throw combinations though. He needs to set everything up behind the jab. Looks like on the inside perhaps Ponsak Lek does have the edge in hand speed. Good work there once again from the defending champion. More of a slap there that right hand there from the tie fighter. Really, I don't think either of those punches landing and Hussein they're coming back with his own right hand. Ooh, Hussein there leaving himself very open, Adrian, there to that counter punch. Well, he, kn he knows that's coming, that's his speciality, Ponsaklik, and uh, just like to see Huzzy keep his guard up nice and high there. Well, there's the end of the second round. I would have to probably give the edge there again to the Thai champion. I thought that uh, he landed the more effective punches. Yeah, I don't think a lot of scoring blows landed in that round, Matthew, but I think certainly a few more to the Thai. And uh, we've got to remember this is Huzzy's first world title fight ever. Pong Saplek has had eight. Uh, so uh, it's going to take Huzzy a bit of time to settle in the fight. I'm not too worried that the Thai might have shaded the first two rounds, but I think Huzzy is going to work his way into the fight and uh, lift his work rate over the next few rounds. As we look there into the corner of Pun Lek, 50 fights, 48 victories, just the two defeats, and both of those came at the hands of the same fighter early in his career, and uh, 27 of his 48 victories have ended inside the, the distance. And there's Vic Darcini and ringside, a huge team of Australians have actually flown over for the fight, 50 in all, including all of Team Fennec. So Hussey with plenty of support as we set ourselves for round number three. And there's that uppercut on the inside there from the defending champion. Hussey leaving himself perhaps a little bit too open there. Over enthusiastic in his desire to uh, throw his own combinations. champion continues to come forward and Huss is going to need to offset him and the way to do that is of course to land that jab perhaps not mix it up so much here in the early stages on the inside with the Thai champion and Ponsak Lek they're finding a home for that uppercut on the inside ripping it up the middle he's saying they're bullying him against the ropes Needs to let his hands go. Rip to the body with that trademark left rip. Yeah, Matthew, I think he needs to, uh, Huzzy needs to use his jab a lot more. If he's going to, uh, if he does have height and reach advantages, uh, he doesn't really want to be drawn into an inside fight. Yeah, I think that's where this tight champion will thrive on the inside. So at this stage, at the midway point of round number three, Hussey Hussein. Uh, Keeping it fairly even and keeping the champion honest. And for somebody just fighting in his world championship for the first time, showing a great deal of composure is the Australian fighter. And 
it's like the, like they're bearing the attack going to the head then back to the body a good work there from the champion straight up the middle with those punches left rip to the body there from Hussey Hussein needs to come over the top probably with the right hand as you can see there the Thai champion they're trying to time that left hook by coming through the middle with his own punches Matthew I think uh, Hussein Hussein just starting to find his range a bit more now and uh, I think he's settling into a rhythm Good work there from Hussein, landing the right hand late here in the third round. Well, perhaps the best round of the fight so far for Hussey Hussein. Yeah, for sure, Matthew. Uh, certainly in the last minute he stepped it up there, was starting to land with some body punches and some combinations. And uh, I think from here on in, he, he has to keep lifting the work rate. He's fighting on the other guy's territory and any close rounds, you always feel the champion is going to have the edge. So if he's going to win these rounds, he's got to lift his work rate and be decisively winning these rounds. That certainly is so, fighting the champion in, in his own backyard. And I guess the the thing for Hussey Hussein too is that he wouldn't have seen a lot as we listen into the corner. Well, the words of encouragement there in the corner for Hussey Hussein, his brother Billy, and of course Jeff Fennick, the former three-time world champion. As we set ourselves now for the fourth round of this WBC flyweight championship battle. Some of the action from the previous round is that work there up the middle there from the Thai champion. And that's where he's had most of his success, Adrian, up the middle, catching Hussey as he comes in. That's right. Nice uh, right hand landed there by Hussein Hussein. right there from Hussein, timed it beautifully. He was able to partially block the, the ties counter. And this is proving an intriguing battle. Very well matched these two fighters. Good work there from Hussein, ripping to the body. comes the Thai champion. You can see the way he really rips with that right hand of his. And that is his money punch. And a good thing to see also, Adrian, is the fact that both fighters are varying their attack. It's making it a very interesting contest. Both are throwing good combinations. There's Hussein there once again digging to the body. Doesn't want to lean in too much no. because it does leave him open to that uppercut up the middle from the Thai champion. He hasn't fought too many southpaws in his career, Matthew. Uh, of course, his spiral was one-one in Victor Chinian, and uh, I, I, I just think that Hussey just needs to kind of lift a little bit more his work right It's not easy. The champion is closing on him, not giving him the room to do that. But I just think he needs to assert himself with more with the left jab and uh, then try and follow up with some good combinations. There's that jab that we were talking about, Hussein uh, keeping the fight at a distance, using his physical advantages, making the champion reach for it with his own punches.
straight left there from Hong Sak Lek. Both fighters landing on that occasion. And the Thai champion there just punctuating the end of the round with another left hand. These rounds are very tight. And I guess when they are close, you've got to have some concern for Hussey Hussein. Absolutely, Matthew. Certainly the, the close rounds, you always feel the champion fighting at home as well. He's always going to have a slight edge. And as we said earlier, Hussey needs to win these rounds, not just win them by a little bit, he needs to win them decisively in the minds of the judges. And I don't think he's really done that yet. He had a good round in the third. And after four rounds, I have it 38 points apiece, so I've got it dead even. A third of the way through the fight as we listen to Jeff Finnick. the WBC flyweight championship battle it's Hussein Hussein the challenger from Australia taking on the defending champ making his eighth defense Hong Sak Lek as once again we look back at some action from the previous round Hussein just walking onto a, a straight right hand there from the defending champion Hong Sak Lek does have on his record the quickest knockout in flyweight history, just 34 seconds. But uh, so far, Hussein able to weather the storm of the of the Thai champion's power. Interesting to note, Matthew, that uh, the last three defences from uh, Hong Sak Lek have all gone the 12-round distance. So uh, he, he can knock him out early, but he can also go the distance. But Team Fennec has said all along for this fight that their plan is to come on strong in the later rounds and uh, they're predicting a late round KO so let's see if it pans out that way. The thing is he doesn't want too much wear and tear early in the contest and that's why I guess he needs to keep it more on the outside. Not allow the tie to dominate on the inside where he seems to thrive. Hussein showing very good defensive skills too. A lot of those punches are being blocked or partially blocked. Good work there from Hussein. They're doubling up there with the left hand and coming over the top again with the right. More effective punching from the Australian. And the tie not as accurate as he was earlier in the fight. And that's mainly due to the fact that in that exchange, for instance, we can see Hussein keeping the fight more on the outside. Which is where I think he needs to fight, Matthew. And that the one thing about Team Fennec fighters is they're always supremely well conditioned. You know that Hussey is going to go the 12 rounds, even though he's never really had to do that in his career. Well, the Korean judge there telling Hussein to keep his head up, which uh, is something that he should be doing anyway, because leaning forward, it does leave him open to those rips up the middle from the Thai champion. Saying continuing to go to the body and perhaps that is part of his plan if he's going to try and wear the champion down later in the fight. And this is not where Hussein has been the, at his most effective on the inside, allowing the Thai champion to dominate with his uppercuts. And there's the end of the fifth round. Well, another very tight round. I would, I think I would give the edge there, Adrian, to Hussein Hussein. Yes, I thought he landed some good crisp blows there, Matthew. Uh, but again, these rounds are so close to call. And if it does go the distance, it's going to be very, very hard. Uh, I think it's going to be hard for Hussey to win. I hope I'm wrong, but... Uh, Fighting a champion who's, as we said, won his last three title fights at home on points. He's really got to step it up. Well, 
referee there going over to the corner of Hussey Hussain and telling him to keep the head up. I think he's a bit worried that he's using the head on the inside. They seem fairly pleased in uh, in, in Hussey's corner there. Yeah, he's really worked so far as they should be because he has he has done very well through the first five rounds. I think with Jeff Fennick as well, he's been and seen it all, hasn't he? Both as a trainer and as a fighter, so uh, he's staying pretty composed there. And as we look back there at that replay, you can see that Hussey Hussain was able to basically block all of those punches. Now, whether all the judges at ringside were able to also see that is another thing. But Hussain has shown very good defensive skills in this fight so far. You can see him there trying to double up, triple up with the jab. Stop the tie fighter coming forward. Oh, there's a nice straight right hand there from Hussein. We haven't seen a jab much at all from the Thai champion. He's tended to wait for Hussein to come on the inside where he's been able to close the gap. Good footwork there from Hussey. You're watching round six action of this WBC Flyweight Championship bout. Oh, and Hussein there walking onto a punch there from the Thai champ. doubling up with that left grip to the body. Perhaps he's a bit cautious about throwing that because the Thai champion has been able to counter him a number of times as he's left himself open with that left grip. Matthew, he's probably never fought anybody who, well, he hasn't fought anybody with the experience and the ability of Pong Saklak who can make him pay when he does miss. So uh, that's why we're probably seeing a slightly more cautious Hussain Hussain than in the past. But I think he's still smart, finding a pretty smart fight. So now keeping the left hand low. He's trying to get the Thai champion to come onto his own right hand. <laughs> haven't seen the zip in the punches from Hussey Hussein that we saw in previous rounds here in the sixth. Very close round. I think you, on my on my scorecard at least, I'd probably give the edge there to the champion. He landed the more effective punches. Yes, I agree with that. Again, there's not much between it in the rounds for these two guys. Uh, Pong Sattlet's probably been slightly more successful in imposing his style there with the counter punching. Huzzy, I think, is trying to work off the jab and trying to get those trademark body shots in, and he certainly has landed a few. But I think he's got to really pour on the gas and step up the second half of the fight. I think he's still in it and I doubt very, very much, much so. you know, whether he'd be more than a round or two behind, but uh, Team Fennec has always said that he would come on strong in the second half. Show your hunger, Huss. We're going to go in this ring for after Hussey. I think they're in the corner of Hussey Hussein. They want him to keep it at a distance. They don't want it to be a fight on the inside. And we could see early in that round number six when Hussey was able to double up, triple up with the jab. It was offsetting the tight champion. But as the round went on, uh, Pong Saklet was able to land more, some of his stuff on the inside and was able to shorten the distance. And uh, that's where he dominated that previous round. And if he can assert himself with a jab there, at least he keeps Pong Saklek off him there and gives himself the chance to, to kind of throw combinations.
as Hussein then once again ripping to the body then coming back with the jab trying to keep the fight more at a distance here in the seventh Bell, the defending champion, has continued to come forward. He hasn't been offset by the punching power of Hussey Hussein. Neither fighter has been visibly hurt or shaken in the fight so far. Has been fought at a frantic pace, really, from the opening bell. Nice stiff jab there from Hussein. Hussein just needs to lift his tempo a little bit more, lift his work rate. Just needs to catch the eye of the judges. Of course, Matthew, every single punch that uh, Ponsetlet lands, even if it's not a really good blow, is going to draw cheers from the crowd, and you just wonder subconsciously whether that will sway the judges no matter how experienced they are. Also, the fact that the Thai champion is forcing the fight, he continues to come forward. At times, Hussey is doing the right thing. He's manoeuvring around the ring, but also in the eye of the judges, perhaps they feel that he won't be doing enough. He hasn't really asserted himself probably with the jab in the way that he would have hoped to in this fight. and hasn't been able to really use those physical advantages as yet, but uh, of course, we've still got a lot of time to go. from Hussein, they're showing his hand speed. They're landing the seventh round. Most of these rounds are desperately close. This fight, sorry. this fight coming to you from the Lumpini Stadium in Bangkok, Thailand. Apparently it's very, very hot over there, 35 degrees. Very high humidity. If they're into the corner once again of Hussein. going on there but I think basically the point is what they've been saying from the opening bell which is to keep the distance establish the jab don't allow the champion on the inside which is where he's been able to thrive so far five rounds to go as we set ourselves for the eighth round counter left hand there from the champion <laughs> saying they're coming over the top a couple of times with the right hand Fairly clean fight so far. With that left roof once again from Hussein, then coming over there with the right and then digging back to the body with the right hand. Seem to have had too many problems with the southpaw stance. It's been a great performance by the Australians so far. You have to probably just give a very slight edge to the defending champion, though.
what he needs to do. Set it up behind the jab. You can see there finding success with the right hand, blinding the champion with the left. And then coming straight down the middle with his own right hand. Robert Billy Hussain offering encouragement in the background. There certainly this is one of Hussey's best rounds so far. Landed some good body shots in the first minute and uh, a couple of good head shots in the last few seconds. Well, he's been able to cut, keep the fight more at a distance, which is where he will have his advantages, physical advantages, and also uh, as far as his boxing skills. He's saying they're just slipping, I think, on the middle of the canvas. Looks like they are able to take advantage of that, clipping him over the year. there from Hussein. Letting go with both hands to the body. And a good round there I feel to Hussey Hussein. And as we at the end of the eighth I have him just ahead. 77-76. I've got it even at the moment there. Uh, of course we don't know what the official judges scores are so we're in suspense too but uh, that was more what we needed to see from Hussey getting on top. Jeff Fennick urging him to dig deep at something that Jeff Fennick was renowned for throughout his career. Hussey Hussein, a lovely guy outside the ring and has a lot of skill. We're going to see whether he has it in him to become a world champion over these final four rounds. I think it's going to come down to this, Adrian. Definitely, Matt. And uh, a little bit of concern then, Jeff Fennick's voice. Not panic, but concern. He obviously uh, Hussey to really dominate these last four rounds and you've got to remember Hussey has only been more than eight rounds twice and that was uh, he's won two ten round points decisions so uh, once we get past ten rounds he'll be going into uncharted territory this is for the WBC flyweight championship on sack Lech making the eighth defense of his belt against Australian undefeated Australian Hussein Hussein. Good work there from Hussein. I think one thing that perhaps the judges may, may or may not have seen is, is the defensive skills of Hussein. I think he's been able to block a lot of these punches from the champion. He blocked that one. A nice short right hand there from Ponsac Lech, finding the mark. fight at a distance. I love to see him pumping out that jab a little bit more. Easier said than done, of course. He's walked into that straight left of the Thai champion a couple of times this round. Jeff Fennick asked Hussey to dig deep here in the ninth. He just hasn't quite lifted the tempo enough. And the tyres come back well here in this particular round. Yeah, Hussey not able to really assert himself with a jab. We see it flicking out there, but he needs to try and double up on it and uh, then attack from there. But uh, Pongsak lets a very crafty, very experienced fighter here. And he's not, been, he's not allowed Hussey to be able to assert his own style. And he has been unrelenting to Ponsak Lech from the opening round. He hasn't taken a backward step. And that too has to register with the ringside judges. 
nice jab there from Hussein. You can hear the snap in the punch. Well, good work there from the Thai champion on the inside. A very good round there to the defending champion. And once again, I have a dead even. 87 points apiece. 86 points apiece. I've got, uh, I do have the tie fighter just ahead. sort of sense there the desperation rising in Jeff Fennick's voice well there's real urgency there now we're coming into the championship rounds and uh, he needs to win all of these rounds decisively to win it on points and we, that, even that may not be enough depending on how the judges have seen it because so many of these rounds have been close I guess also a concern for Hussey's corner is the fact that he hasn't really been able to, to stun the champion at all throughout the fight he's landed some very good punches at times he's dominated the fight with his combinations, but he hasn't been able to really hurt the champion. And that's got to also be playing on his mind. You just wonder whether or not uh, his body attacks will be effective enough and slowing the champion down in the last two or three rounds. Will those rips finally take their toll? Uh, the champion looks pretty well conditioned and we know he can go 12 rounds. Not where Hussein wants to be here on the inside. The Thai just doesn't stop throwing throwing punches, whether they're being blocked or not. He just fights in perpetual motion. It's been a very entertaining fight. Very few lax moments at all. Ponsak Lek, of course, came in a little bit overweight this afternoon. That obviously hasn't affected him because he has continued to press the action. And he's saying they're just falling into a clinch. Just needs to lift his intensity a little bit more here, the Australian. It's not over until the final bell. Nice left hook there from Hussein, finding the mark. There's a close up there of the left eye of Hussey Hussein. Not heavily marked up despite the frantic pace of the contest. Hussein really needing to dig deep now. He needs to load up with some of these punches. Just slip there to the canvas. And the concluding stages now here of the tent. Another very close round there, Adrian. Hard nope. to say either way. Perhaps the Thai champion has landed perhaps a couple of more effective blows, but uh, yeah, I, I've just given it to the Thai. Not much in it, as you say, and it's been one of those fights of thrust and parry where neither man has dominated for more than a few seconds. Neither man has been hurt. Jeff Fennick having plenty to say there in the corner. All 
those years of hard work had come down to six minutes in the ring for Hussey Hussain. And these are six minutes that he's never experienced before, rounds 11 and 12. And we've got to remember that the champion also hasn't lost for seven years. He's strung together 39 straight wins. So uh, uh, it's going to be hard. It's not impossible for Hussey, but he really has to step on the gas in these last two rounds. Missing with the right hand. There's that left hook that landed. rip up the middle there from the defending champion and that has been his most successful punch he had a lot of success early in the fight with it and he's saying really doesn't want to mix it up too much with him on the inside i think the thai champion does have the edge in hand speed they always hurt hussy it was the uppercut the punch that he's had so much success with throughout the contest hussein hussein down here in the 11th round just wonder how much fatigue plays a part as well. Uh, it's obviously very warm there. The Thai fighter will be more used to the conditions. As we said, also more used to going past round 10 as well. So he doesn't seem to be feeling too many ill effects from the punch. He's straight back into it. Loading up there with his own right hand. I think he realises now, Matthew, that it's all or nothing for him. He really has to take some risks in these last two rounds. In a, in a close fight, uh, a 10-8 round could swing it the champion's way. So I think uh, Hussein Hussein now has no option but to really go all out. Hussein showing tremendous courage here, continues to come forward. Perhaps more of a flash knockdown. Yeah, he certainly didn't give me the impression that he was hurt, perhaps caught a little bit off balance or by surprise, but he was up by the count of four, and uh, certainly since in the minute or so since the knockdown, he seems quite composed. It still is a 10-8 round to Ponsac Lek, no matter what, unless, of course, Hussey can return the favour. moments here ticking away in the 11th there's that left rip to the body it's been a good punch for Hussein throughout the contest there once again from Hussein he has come back well after suffering that knockdown early in the round so just three minutes to go in this WBC flyweight championship battle Hussey Hussein perhaps at this stage behind the eight ball having suffered a knockdown there in round number 11 the champion looks fairly composed there in the corner I've got him ahead 106 104 with one round remaining. So basically, Adrian, for mine, Hussey Hussein does need a knockout to win this fight. Yes, I've got him behind by three points. I think he definitely needs a knockout. And uh, keep your fingers crossed, Australia. And Jeff Fennick looking for his first world champion as a trainer to, to add to three, of course, as a boxer. There it is, there. He really has had a lot of success with that punch throughout the contest. And on that occasion, uh, a bonus of scoring a knockdown. Here we go for the 12th and final round of this WBC flyweight championship battle. 
tie fighter there hitting on the break. Overall, it's been a very clean fight. Both fighters have had success, had their moments. Same as we've said throughout, perhaps just not able to really enforce his will on the champion as he would have liked. He's tended at times to fall into the trap of fighting here on the inside as he is now. Which for the smaller man is a bonus. That being the champion. Both fighters superbly conditioned. saying they're once again letting go with the left hand. I see they're bearing the attack with the left. He needs to do more than this at this stage though. He needs to really begin to load up with these punches. He's got to look for the knockout for mine. Of course, uh, judging is a very strange thing in boxing, Adrian, and perhaps we could both have it wrong. Indeed, we've got judges from Japan, Belgium, and the USA ruling on this one, and uh, we have no idea how they're scoring it, of course. Uh, we both have Hussein Hussein behind. He's trying hard in this final round to assert himself, going on the attack here. Good work there from Hussein. The Thai champion just doesn't look at all alarmed. Been very composed throughout, paced himself well. But Hussein has finished well here in the 12th. Gonna be a desperately close score line. Good work there once again from Hussein. I think he's given it his best shot, Hussi Hussein. We're under 10 seconds now in the 12th and final round. And there it is, the bell ending the fight. The champion just shading Hussein Hussein 115 to 114. As we look back here at the some of the action from the concluding round. I gave that last round to Hussein Hussein, although I still had him losing the fight by two points. Um, I just think that he wasn't quite able to assert his jab and the body punches, the kind of great attributes of his boxing as much as he would have liked against a very skillful, very experienced, very cagey fighter. Here again, I believe, is the knockdown. And they time that punch beautifully on Zach Leck. It's almost a hybrid hook uppercut. Where it is right on the point of the chin, but uh, Hussey was straight back up, straight back into the action. And uh, he showed tremendous skill and courage in this fight, Hussein. Hussein, even if he does lose, and I know that this, this is something that you say a lot of times when a fighter loses a fight, if he is going to lose it, uh, he's, he would have learned a lot from this fight, and uh, he should be very proud of his performance. Absolutely. He showed that he belonged there, that he thoroughly deserved the fight. I mean, sometimes fighters get stage fright and don't perform on the night. He probably didn't perform as well as he would have liked to have performed, but it was a very creditable performance. Uh, uh, he, he was by no means outgunned or outclassed, uh, perhaps outexperienced a little bit, although we should say that Pong Satlek is actually two years younger than Hussey, but he's had almost twice as many professional fights. Pong Satlek obviously uh, of the belief that he has won the fight. It'll be interesting to see how the judges do score it, how close they have it. I 
Overall, it was a very evenly matched contest, though. Ponsak left able to dominate perhaps a little bit more on the inside, but when Hussey kept the fight on the outside and, and used his jab and used his physical advantages, he did cause the Thai champion problems. <laughs> ให้ไฟแดงหนึ่งร้อยสิบเอ็ดคะแนนน้ำเงินหนึ่งร้อยสิบสามคะแนนมิสเตอร์ทาเคอากิคารยาญี่ปุ่นให้ไฟแดงห